If you ever thought about starting a clothing brand, I mean, I'm guessing if you're watching this channel, it's very possible that you have thought about that. And then maybe you've even looked into it. Maybe you've even started taking steps to do it. And then you probably just completely lost all hope because of how monumentally hard it is. What are you gonna design? How are you gonna get people to buy it? How are you gonna find the, the factory? And do you even know how to sew? I don't know if you know how to sew. Are you actually trying to like do fashion or are you just trying to, to be like a t-shirt brand like a lot of people do? I don't know, it's mind boggling. You don't even know how to make a tech pack. I mean, maybe you do, but you probably don't considering that the numbers out there, there are probably very, very small amount of people who know how to put together a tech pack. It's just unreal the amount of work that goes into it and also the amount of money and the amount of luck, but also the amount of just like fate if you're gonna make it or not, it's craziness. So that's why I respect it even more when someone is going about those steps the right way. And that leads me into our subject of today, which is a young designer, a new designer named Willie Austin. So he went out of his way to send me his first piece ever. He calls this uh, the sideline jacket. And he sent this to me, I told him, I'm not gonna promise I'm gonna say anything. I could love this thing, or I could spend an entire 15 minute review hating on it, much respect, he was totally cool with that. He respected the process. So we're gonna be talking about this piece that he sent me, but also I wanna talk more largely about how to start a brand the right way and the wrong way, because there are definitely two paths there and a lot of people pick the bad one for some reason, I guess because it's kind of easier and a bit lazier and you know what I mean? But first we're gonna check this piece out. I'm gonna give you a close up look at the details and we'll talk a bit about the branding elements and the interesting industry elements that I'm thinking about. And finally, we'll try it on. We'll throw a fit together and have some fun with it. So let's dive in and check this piece out. Yo, 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 before we get too much further, subscribe to the channel. I make tons of luxury and streetwear content. And also, if you're looking for deals on luxury and streetwear, check the description. I've got some of the best sites with all authentic stuff. Check it out. All right, and there it is, the Sideline Jacket by Willie Austin. This is his first design he's ever done. And it's pretty impressive for a first design. Like, it is really a fashion piece. Not many people do that as their first design. A lot of people just throw out a t-shirt or something. So I really do respect this. But first off, let me say, Willie sent this to me personally and he double bagged it. My man double bagged it. Two UPS bags or whatever it was, it was inside one. Then he bagged it again so I wouldn't cut into the piece when I opened it. Very important, very important. I gotta say, I appreciate it. But let's look at this tag because even like the tag is a really important part for a brand. That's the, the first thing many people look at when they pick up a piece, they go look at the tag. So what do we got here? So this is like a, a deep yellow piece of cardstock here with black print for the Willie Austin brand print. I will say the font feels a little bit standard, but also kind of classic. Um, the color is very Pierre Moss. I might change that hue just to get some extra separation from that brand, create my own identity. But I do think yellow is a good color. I actually really like the yellow that he's used here. It's a bit more beigey in a way. So I don't know, maybe dial in that kind of staple brand yellow would be my first suggestion here. And we've got that on both sides, which again, it's a little bit more expensive to print two-sided cardstock, but it means that whichever way this is lying, you're seeing that brand name, which is really important. People don't think about some of these things. So right off the bat, some things that he's doing right that a lot of people would not even consider with their first piece of clothing, which is crazy. And now here's the brand tag at the back of the neck. And this, this starts to get at my one overarching uh, criticism, I would say. I am overall extremely, extremely positive about this piece. I'm really hyped on it. I think it is super, super cool and an incredible start for a new designer. But it has one flaw that I would like to critique, but I think it's very, very fixable, okay? So I don't want this to start off super negative, but I think you can start to see here my biggest criticism. So we kind of have to talk about it right up front. So take a look at this stitching. Does that look 
like luxury stitching to you? My short answer, unfortunately, would be no. You see the, the zigzagginess of those stitches. It goes over the size tag there, and the size tag itself is a little bit off-center. Um, even having it up top at all is kind of weird. You'd expect to see it maybe down here, but I don't hate that it's up top, but I would like it to be centered, and I would definitely like those stitches to be straighter. It just gives off more of a sense of quality, okay? Straight stitching, it's not necessarily going to make this piece of clothing uh, more stable or better constructed, but it just gives off a better, more high-end impression, and the impression from these stitches is a little bit rough. And if we take a look at the care tags that are inside the jacket, we can start to see where some of that may come from. So first of all, it's 100% polyester. I am super psyched to talk to you guys about this fabrication because it's so cool. Uh, washing instructions. And then down at the bottom here, we can see made in China. And I think that is where our issues stem from. If you are a brand new designer, especially if you don't personally, if you didn't go to like fashion school and learn how to sew for years and years on end, manufacturing your stuff anywhere other than China is going to be completely cost prohibitive. I'm sure it's already very expensive to make one of these, but if you were to try to make these in Portugal, France, Italy, the United States, anywhere else, it would be, I think, many, many times more expensive. So I think Willie had to make a choice. He found a factory in China to make his stuff. And the construction that you see, for instance, at that tag that we talked about, reflects that made in China-ness of it. So I definitely have some suggestions for later, some ideas of where he could go with this to address that. But it is the biggest downside of this piece. But here's the thing. There's so much good to talk about here. I don't want to talk about downsides anymore. So let's dive in and look at the details of this piece. And you'll see why I'm still so psyched on it, despite some of the construction wonkiness. And first, I think we've got to start by talking about this fabrication. It is so cool. So it is a super heavy satin. Like, it looks kind of like a drapey, I don't know, souvenir jacket or something. But this is thick, okay? Like, take a look at that collar here. That is how thick it is on the whole thing. It really is a jacket thickness. And there's something else that adds to that as well. And that is, you may have noticed that the entire thing is lined with mesh. So, of course, you've got this great sportswear feel but it also makes it feel more high-end and like a jacket, the fact that it is entirely lined. So it's not just the satin sitting on you, it's also lined. But like, you know, most jackets are going to be lined in kind of what you'd line a blazer with or something, but lining it with mesh gives it this authentic sportswear feel that he's clearly going for with the varsity elements that really ties it all together. Now let's talk about some of the elements of branding here. Of course, we have this awesome chenille varsity letter. Uh, it's clearly a W-A for Willie Austin. And I love that. You know, it makes you think like golf Lafleur stuff like that. And it's super iconic and a great way to start getting his name out there without having like a tacky monogram or something. Putting it right at the chest in chenille, it feels high end, but also relatable and nostalgic in a way. We also get a nice big brand patch at the arm, giving me kind of like Montclair vibes in a way. And also calling it Willie Austin Sports on here gives you a more direct nod to the fact that he is going for a classic sportswear vibe, which is coming into play more and more right now. Like it was just really recently announced that Jay-Z and some other people just bought Mitchell and Ness, the old kind of... Uh, athletic wear brand that was way bigger back in the day. So this stuff is coming back. And there's some other stuff that's like really smart too that you would, again, never expect somebody to pull off in their first piece. For instance, the colors are incredibly smart. Like I said, this is a very light kind of beige yellow. And then if you look at the contrast stitching at the collar, down around the kangaroo pocket at the waist, even the varsity like rib knit sleeves, it's all that same color going throughout. So you've got the black and you've got the like beigey gold yellow. Man, it is really, really nice. 
As you can see, it is also a quarter zip. So this is not a full zip. You just do get a little bit of zipper there to open it up if you're so inclined. It is a real metal zipper, which again, all of this stuff shows a crazy amount of self-belief. It's obvious that this took a lot of investment, like putting in chenille lettering that's stitched down, real metal zippers, all this stuff costs money. And you've got to really believe in yourself to put that kind of investment into the first piece of your brand. So I'm really impressed by that. As I mentioned, unfortunately, some of that wonky construction comes into play when you start looking at the contrast stitching around the zipper and things like that. You just really want to see those stitches being as straight as possible and as clean as possible. Listen, I've seen much, much worse, but man, if he locked his manufacturing down, I think he'd be kind of unstoppable, honestly, because this from a design perspective is really impressive. And let's talk about that a little bit more. So clearly from the silhouette here, from the style, it's given me fear of God, most definitely. A little bit of Montclair with that patch over there, a bit of Pierre Moss in the yellows and blacks. But if you showed this piece to me and told me, oh, this is fear of God or this is Pierre Moss, I'd say it doesn't feel like those brands. It feels like its own thing, even though it is clearly in a similar ballpark, no pun intended. It has its own vibe, which is so hard to pull off with your very first piece. As you can see, the cut is wide and boxy, but also short. It's got a little bit of a crop to it and also some slightly dropped shoulders. So there's been a lot of thought put into this silhouette that really just shows a level of care and thought that is extremely impressive to me. That's just the word I keep coming back to over and over with this piece is impressed because it is a kind of staggering piece of work for someone to pull this out right off the bat. It shows a lot of talent and creativity in my opinion. All right, so that is the Sideline Jacket by Willie Austin. And now I wanna dive more into the industry aspect. So let's take a look at this specific designer and see what he's doing, how he's approaching this process. All right, before we dive deep into the industry stuff, I wanna show Willie a little bit of love. He's got a couple of Instagram accounts. I'm not sure which one he prefers for the brand. He's got this one, which seems to have the most followers, but then that, so that one's Willie Austin second. And then the other one for the brand seemingly is Willie Austin underscore. And I had some conversations with Willie about where he wants to take this brand. And you go to his website, <clears throat> right off the bat, it looks really, really well thought out and well designed. He's got good photography here. He's got models that look really good wearing his piece. It's just really nice presentation. You can see right off the bat, Sideline Jacket has its own kind of sub menu here. This is the staple first piece for the brand that he's really going for. He even got a video of them in the factory putting together the jacket. Prototypes, he's showing the history of the brand. It's so sick. He's super, super dedicated to this and I really respect that. You can see even going through the ages, this first one, this feels very Montclair to me. Coming into this one here, looks more fear of God. And then his final design, he's landed on something that really feels like his own. But now we gotta start talking about the business stuff, the industry stuff. So if I go to buy now, these are going for $300. And I think that's totally, totally fair. Are the materials, do those feel like they're worth $300? Yes, absolutely. Does the concept, the silhouette, the design, does that feel like it's worth $300? Absolutely, 100%. Does the construction feel like it's worth $300? Not necessarily. And that's why that's the biggest thing I'm harping on right now because if he figures the construction out, it's no longer a $300 jacket. It's a $500 jacket, 600, seven, eight, a hundred even potentially if he gets his name more out there. And that's where things can really start snowballing and get crazy. But he is doing so many things right. For example, he is seeding this jacket to people that he thinks have the right vibe for what he's doing can get his name out there. People like me, which again, I really appreciate it. I think that's super cool and I'm happy to support. I'm a big fan already, but also take a look at this. He's got it on Jay Tatum right here and it looks incredible. Like, look at this look. This looks like tailor-made. What 
Mm, that is nice. He looks incredible right here. That jacket, if I saw that, I'd be like, where do I get that right now? And if you guys don't know, Jay Tatum, 4 million followers. So clearly, Willie, he's got the right idea going here. And this is what's going to make him make a name for himself and get him out there. So I talked to Willie. I asked him, what are his goals? Where is he trying to go next? And one of his big goals is to get stocked in Saks Fifth Avenue. And that's an awesome goal. Getting stockists is incredibly important. And stockists just means like shops that are stocking your brand for sale. And listen, I love dreaming big. And Saks, if you can go for it, absolutely go for it. But my suggestion to him would be to also not forget the smaller shops, the smaller stockers that will still help him make a name for himself. Places like Union are big on supporting up and coming designers. And I think this shop would be great for him. I could also see somewhere like End working really, really well for him. They tend to go more in that athletic vibe. That's the kind of clientele they're creating here. But because of some of the construction stuff that we've been talking about, one of my biggest suggestions for Willie would be to try and find some investment so that he can get into better factories, get either investment or connections that can get him into those high-end factories. Probably somewhere like Portugal would be ideal for him, I think. So for that reason, if I were him, I would be banging down every single door I could find to try and get a meeting with the new guards group or somebody like this. Now, if you haven't heard of them, I don't blame you, probably most people haven't, but they're incredibly important because they are the owners of all these brands. Marcelo Berlon, Off-White, Palm Angels, Heron Preston, Ambush, Opening Ceremony. This is the perfect vibe of where Willie wants to be. He wants to be at that intersection of luxury, um, athletic, and streetwear. That's exactly where he is, and that is what New Guards Group does, and they have the connections with the manufacturing that produce all of these pieces of clothing that are really, really high-end, well-made, but also have that authenticity to them. So that is what I would be trying to do, is making those connections to lock down the manufacturing and getting it pristine. Because then, like, sky's the limit at that point. No question. But man, I gotta tell you, I respect the hell out of what Willie Austin is doing because he created a new garment, a new silhouette from scratch. And he did stuff like create a tech pack. He had to create here. Let me show you what, what this entails. He had to make technical drawings with dimensions and all that stuff, quantities, sizes, what materials, giving them examples. What are the different components like the zippers and tags and all that stuff. Then he's got to get samples, give notes, send it back, get new ones back. And then finally, he's got to tell them the order that he wants. But this is a lot of hard work that 99.9% .9 of wannabe designers do not go through. And why is that? It's because it's incredibly hard and also really expensive. So you got to have either some money in the bank or a lot of self-belief. So what do most brands do? They buy blank t-shirts. They buy them for 2 to $5 a pop, and then they screen print their brand logo on it, and they say, I'm, I'm a fashion designer now. And listen, much respect. That's your hustle. Go for it. But I have way more respect for somebody that's actually out there trying to create new silhouettes, trying to create real fashion. Because to me, real fashion means you are pushing clothing forward and trying to create new things and not just print your logo on a t-shirt. Once you've made a name for yourself, knock yourself out. It's a great way to make money on the side. You sell t-shirts along with your more high-end innovative stuff, but you really got to start out with that innovation because that's what people believe in. That's what people attach themselves to. And that's what makes them want to spend their big amounts of money on you. All right, so now that we've talked about all of that, it is finally time to put this piece on. And let's throw a fit together around it. Let's make it a look. All right, so now the question is, what kind of look are we going to put together with this bad boy? And he's clearly already talked about fear of God as an influence, not just design-wise, but also philosophy-wise. So I've got a pair of fear of God jeans that I absolutely love. I think those will go well with it, kind of classic straight leg vibes. Um, for footwear, 
He's also mentioned Pierre Moss. I think another great inspiration here. So let's throw in some Pierre Moss sneakers. These were a collab, kind of very sportswear oriented. Also got some yellows in there to go along. I think that'll be perfect. And then what about accessories? Um, I think the leather on this rude hat is going to go really well with that kind of satin, thick satin here. Also, Rude is another brand that I see a lot of similarities with here with Willie Austin. And finally, I just think a little jewelry, a little silver would do some good here. So let's use this ambush lighter necklace, throw it all together and see what we get. Okay, I, uh, I think this look works really, really well. Hey, Willie, take some notes out there. Your next lookbook, keep in mind a look like this seems to work well. So I just want to start off, I've spent a lot of time in this video talking about the construction of the garment, but I want to add some caveats to that and some more positivity to that conversation. So when I'm talking about the construction of this garment and some of the issues with it, they are really visual issues like stitches not being straight or being a little bit inconsistent. But when I wear it, Listen, first of all, the construction, it feels very, very solid. It feels as well put together as anything else you could wear. And even more than that, the construction, the way it's put together, the thoughtfulness of it is even better than that. So while I may take some issue with the quality of the construction, the visual appeal of it, the fit is immaculate. The sleeves are the perfect length. The shoulders are the perfect width. Everything feels very, very well thought out. A lot of times when you get these kind of newer pieces, newer designers or sample pieces or pieces that seem like they're not as well constructed, they have a lot of fit issues, but this has none of them. This feels like he thought out every single detail of this fit and made sure they got it right, which is incredibly important. And just look at it. Once you get far enough away that you're not seeing each individual stitch, this thing looks like a million bucks. It looks so good. You could 100% see this fitting in, in like an NBA walkout, something like that. That is 100% the vibe here. I really haven't talked yet about the feel. I've talked about the material itself, but let me just reassure, this thing feels awesome. The weight is really, really nice. And that mesh lining, this is one of the most comfortable pieces of outerwear I've worn in a long, long time. Breathable, yet warm, and it feels really solid. I'm also, I have to say, I don't usually go for the crops. I do have some crop pieces, but I tend to be a bit wary of it. But this one works really, really well. The length, at least on me, I'm 5'10", it falls right at my waistline of my pants, which is just perfect. So you're not like showing midriff or anything, but it really feels like it lengthens me. It makes my legs seem longer and it gives you a really, really nice look. So as I'm wearing this thing, some of the issues, they start to fade away and I start to appreciate the piece more as a whole. And that appreciation is there. I am really, really digging this and I'm looking forward to making it more. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Willie Austin does next. I just really hope he takes the right moves. I definitely see promise in what he's doing. I think he's going in the right directions, but I hope he puts some effort into making those connections with the investors or even the manufacturers themselves at those places that can put his pieces to the next level because that is the only piece that's missing now. He's got the vision, the design quality. He's got the point of view. It's all there for success. So People out there looking to start brands should be taking some notes here. It's super impressive. So thank you guys for watching. I thought this was a really cool process being able to look at a new designer's piece and really break it down for you. So take a look at the other video on screen here, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.